Okay, guys, you probably know that uh, my channel sometimes can be overly optimistic, but at the same time I try to be as reasonable as possible. But today, unfortunately, we do have some pretty devastating, some bad news. First of all, Ukrainians started to turn against uh, their own. You will know soon why and what's happening. And also Russia is concentrating 40,000 soldiers around Avdiivka for their next offensive. And Putin decided to escalate immeasurably to decide to escalate just simply a lot but more about all of this in just a couple of minutes what's up investors it's the russian dude and let's get straight to the point and talk about some a ridiculous russian propaganda who <laughs> so today one of russian singers uh, shaman not today but recently it was released a video when in one of his earlier concerts he was singing the song I am Russian, and the whole world might not care about this, but it's all about me, because I'm Russian, I'm proud of it, I don't care about everyone else. And so during his uh, song, he, as a part of his performance, he pushed a nuclear button, causing the crowd to erupt, to scream, to support him, or at least this is the way Russian propaganda presented us. Maybe this was some kind of video editing from different whatever, right? So, but the fact, this is what happened. And even though this is still a ridiculous Russian propaganda, in reality it might not be as funny, because this is one of the earliest uh, things Putin is doing to prepare the younger generation of Russians that potentially in the future he might use either nukes or other total destruction weapons. Because I mean, Shaman is kinda, even not even mine generation, it was uh, the younger generation, I, he's like around 30 or something or about that time. And so he has a lot of fans of younger generation people, because the ones who are older are already brainwashed with Russian propaganda, and now Putin decided to do exactly the same with younger people. And since not too many of them believe what they see on TV, hear on the radio, or read on the internet, he decided to just propagandize them, brainwash them through their idols, musicians, artists, and other famous people, influencers, and so on. And yes, before you even know it, Putin revoked Russia's participation in the ban for the nuclear test treaty. Basically allowing Russia since recently to illegally test nukes. Also, this was confirmed by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia representative Maria Zakharova. Which basically means, if you remember, one, two months ago, Russia was saying, we're not gonna test nukes. What do you think? Are we crazy? We're only gonna test nukes if Americans are gonna do this. And well, Americans didn't do it in one, two months proving that the Russian patience is very small. And Russian decided, okay, we're just gonna quit this nuclear ban treaty and we're gonna do it ourselves, if we want to. And yes, I know, I know, I know, this is not the very first time Russia, or Putin specifically, was threatening the world with the nuclear weapon, but this time he actually did something, both politically and legally, by exiting the nuclear ban treaty and also in the terms of preparing its own people through this shaman singer. So, to say the least, he is now truly escalating. But okay, enough of the Russian propaganda. Now let me give you a very brief update from the south of Ukraine, where there are new advancements by the Ukrainian soldiers. And then we're gonna switch our attention to the east, where 40,000 Russians are concentrating around Avdiivka. And even Ukrainians themselves, unfortunately, torn against their own comrades. But first of all, let me do a very quick stop in Odessa, because recently a civilian ship under Liberian flag was attacked by a Russian KH-31M missile. Unfortunately, there are casualties and there are injured people. But if we get closer to the most active battle zone in the south as of recently, next to Kherson, to this uh, Dnipro river, reportedly Recently, Ukrainians had even more success crossing this water obstacle, and as you can see from this map, their liberation or some even contested territories expanded just a little bit. It was also mentioned that even more armored vehicles started to become transported to the left side of Dnipro. And at the same time, if we go to another not that active front line next to Robotini front line, we can see that Ukrainians were also able to liberate a very small territory in the direction towards Verbovia. 
And as promised, let me give you a similar quick update from the East before talking about Avdiivka. In the meantime, if you guys do not mind and if you do appreciate this style of daily news updating, can you please help me as well? All you need to do for this is to simply like this video, subscribe to my channel. Simple as that, that's it. You can also follow me on Instagram to see how I live outside of YouTube, the link is down below. And so, first of all, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Russians continued their offensive along Kupiansk, Svatov Krimin front line, while Ukrainians are mainly concentrating next to Bakhmut. And then, as you can see right here from this map, Russians indeed were able to advance just a little bit to the west of Volodymyrovka. But on the good side, Ukrainians once again proved that they are able to use extremely inexpensive drones to destroy extremely expensive, <laughs> uh, sorry for poor word selection, but you get the idea, for destroying exp extremely expensive military vehicles and military equipment of Russians. For example, in this video from the East, Ukrainian drone was able to destroy a Russian air defense system called TOR, worth of approximately 25 million dollars. And speaking about the drones, Russians also have their own called Lancet. And so right here is also another video of this Russian drone trying to use an artificial intelligence, according to the Russian propaganda, to capture a target of Ukrainians, this Bradley infantry fighting vehicle, which is just standing there stationary. And still Russian drone missed, causing absolutely no damage. Okay, maybe just a couple of scratches. And by the way, guys, hundreds of extra never seen before footage is still waiting for you every single week on my Patreon, in addition to the early access to fully uncensored The Russian Dune episodes. You can go ahead and check the link that is uh, down below. It starts only as little as $4 per month. This is one of the best ways to support the channel. And for you to see if you like it or not, there is one week of free access. Once again, link is down below. Thank you so much. As we go down to Andrivka, located to the south of Bakhmut, Ukrainians reportedly were able to destroy a Russian assault group and their tank to the west of this uh, settlement. And then also in Luhansk region, Ukrainians were able to eliminate a Russian collaborator, Mikhailo Filipponenko. It was not the very first attempt on his life. Previously, he did survive. And this time, it was uh, different. And the defense intelligence of Ukraine already took the responsibility for uh, this attack. And unfortunately, according to one of Ukrainians within Avdiivka proximity, he mentioned that at this very moment it does look like that Russians kinda reduced the intensity of their attacks, but only because they are regrouping. Russians also concentrating their forces from all three sides, from the north, south and from the east, and at this very moment it is estimated for them to be approximately 40,000 soldiers waiting for the signal to launch the attacks. And also right now, since the artillery attacks and missile attacks decreased, it is also assumed that also stockpiling munitions of various calibers, once again to support their offensive in the near future. So looks like, once again, unfortunately, we might see some intense fighting around Avdiivka in the near future. And as you will be able to see from this map, Russians even were able to advance a little bit to the south of Avdiivka next to Opotne, according to this map, at the expense of several hundred more soldiers. But unfortunately, guys, it is not even the worst news. Unfortunately, there are several reports, both from Russian and Ukrainian sites, that Ukrainian soldiers, they start to turn against their own comrades. But at least, it is not something what they do voluntarily. It is the Ukrainian prisoners, captured obviously by Russians, who eventually are forced to fight against their own country. And what I'm referring to here is that Russians created a Bogdan Khmelnytsky battalion, which is supposedly consists only of Ukrainian prisoners of war and other captured personnel. And they're basically, according to once again Russian propaganda, they swore an oath to the military forces of Russia. They pledged their allegiance. They turned against their own country just to and just listen to this one. So that Ukrainians can help Russians fight Ukrainians and liberate them from Ukrainians. This is pretty much as simple as I can put this, what is happening right now. 
And just once again, as you can see, this is a pure insanity. There is no way that those Ukrainians, they're doing this voluntarily. Reportedly, they are going to fight under Donetsk People's Republic uh, local army. Let's call it like this. And at this very moment, yet Bogdan Khmelnytsky battalion is not yet deployed on the front lines. They're still most likely recruiting more Ukrainians to this military unit. And then eventually in the near future, they will use them on the front lines. And I can only, and I can only anticipate, I can only assume what will be exactly their positions. Once again, according to Russia, they will be treated equally to a regular common Russian army. They will even receive the same salary. But in my own personal opinion, unfortunately, these poor men will be forced to be the very first line of defense against their own advancing comrades. But you know what? Even if in the extremely unlikely case scenario, if those Ukrainians are doing this voluntarily, it still violates the Geneva Conven Convention. Because what it says is that if a soldier is captured as a prisoner of war, he might not be reused on the battlefield on the front line, he must not be kept in the close proximity to the fire, he must not be basically exposed to a risk. So Russians, by doing this, they are, once I mean, I mean, there is no surprise here, they once again break another Geneva Convention article. And one of the ways you can tell this, that this is the doing of Russian hands themselves, this is not an initiative by those Ukrainians, because think about those Russians, separatists, who are fighting on the side of Ukraine against Russia, such as, for example, Russian Volunteer Corps or the Freedom of Russia Legion. They are the ones who publish the news, who release the footage, or who just communicate with the media. It is them, themselves. And then right here we have Bogdan Khmelnytsky battalion of allegedly Ukrainians fighting against Ukrainians. And all the correspondence is done by the Russian propaganda. I mean, you can see the difference, right? And just in one way or another, most likely this is yet another attempt for the once again Russian propaganda to try to brainwash Russians and potentially even Ukrainians. The message here is, look, even Ukrainians started to switch sides. What are you waiting for? And guys, I do have a feeling that tomorrow we might receive some pretty good news from the south of Ukraine, from Dnipro River. So if you don't want to miss this, maybe even crucial update, can you please once again subscribe to my channel, it only takes one click. Thank you so much patrons for your support and see you tomorrow.